I arrived at Adyar on the 4th of December 1883, and H. People of Atsky received me very kindly. She was sitting in an armchair before her desk, occupied with writing. My first impression was that I had to do with a sympathetic, educated lady who, though unpretentious, had something rather extraordinary about her. In appearance she was neither slender nor like a pine, nor a formless mass of flesh, as certain persons have described her who probably never saw her. She did not look like a priestess of Isis, nor like a prophetess. Her expression was spiritual, and she was dressed simply. There was nothing extravagant, solemn, nor conventional about her, but I soon noticed a sense of good humour and readiness to answer my questions, in doing which she always succeeded in hitting the nail on the head. Furthermore, this first visit gave an opportunity for observing her occult ability, for she answered a good many of my unspoken thoughts, just as if I had verbally formulated them. Concerning her relations with the masters, she said this, I am not a fool, nor am I crazy. All that I can say is that someone inspires me. Even more than that, this someone enters me. It is not I who speak and write, it is something else within me, my higher shining ego who thinks in me and makes me right. I cannot explain this more clearly. I only know that as I grow older, I become a kind of magnet magazine for the knowledge of someone else. An invisible being comes and covers me as with a cloud, draws me aside as it were, and then I am no more I, Helena Petrovna Blavatsky, but another. This other one is strong and powerful. He is born in a different region of this world, and when he takes possession of me, I feel as if I were half asleep, or in a state of insensibility towards outer things. Then I am no longer in my body, but only near it, and connected with it by a magnetic thread of light. On other similar occasions I am sometimes quite conscious. I know what my body or even its possessor speaks and does. I understand everything and remember it well enough to repeat it and write it down. Then I see great surprise and fear in the faces of the persons present and I am interested in noticing how the master looks at these persons through my eyes with a kind of compassion and teaches them through me, not through my intellect but through his who surrounds my brain with a cloud as with it, sorry, who surrounds my brain as with a cloud. Thank you.